Well, I will talk about the search for gamma ray radiation in nickel copper zirconium nanometals and a oh, microphone. More art. How about this? Moab. <laughs> Can you hear me then? Right? So uh, let's start from this. Why do we have to uh, search for the gamma rays in nickel plus hydrogen system? Of course, we know on the nitrogen hydrogen system, there has been much work on anomalous excess heat generation. Uh, particularly in recent studies, yeah, we studied also uh, hydrogen gas absorption by nickel containing complex nanometals produce large thermal energy, much larger than that of chemical reaction. That there's a big question. What is the origin of this large excess heat generation? Uh, so far, Focal et al. reported some radiations as evidence of nuclear reactions. Yeah. <coughs> We will try to specify the reaction if I, we can see the gamma rays. So that's why we have searched for gamma ray emission from our system. And I would say gamma ray measurements are very important. Uh, if there is discrete gamma rays there, we can see, we can specify the nuclear reaction, which is currently occurring. And also, if there is a delayed gamma rays, uh, we can specify the generated uh, nuclei in this reaction, and also the 511 uh, KV gamma rays, uh, that requires the positron electron annihilation process. That means there should be the positron. And also there should be the continuum gamma rays. That tells us the, the motion of the charged particles, for example, electron or positron or protons. Therefore, the gamma rays makes us a clear evidence for nuclear reaction, which is occurring currently. And also, I would say, I would show the recent, uh, next slide, most sensitive indication of nuclei. So just uh, I, I uh, calculated the counting rate expected for one at output. Just assume the Q value, which is released from the reaction, is almost equal to 6.25 MeV, then the reaction rate should be 10 to the 12th reactions per second. Even if you include the, the uh, efficiency to, to detect them, let's say, I would say the counting rate of the peak should be something around the 10 to the 6th uh, counts per second. This is a very large uh, than the background gamma rays uh, uh, typically something like uh, 0.2 counts per second. So therefore, if there is a, a real reaction uh, of the, of the uh, origin of this uh, uh, heat, then we can easily uh, see that uh, result. So this is the experimental setup, and, uh, which is uh, already explained by the Iwamura-san talk on the uh, first day of this uh, conference. So I don't do that, I don't do ex that. But just for the gamma ray experiment, what I put is a gamma ray detector just around the uh, uh, chamber, reaction chamber. It is uh, maybe placed from 10 centimeters from the chamber. And we did a gamma ray measurement uh, for two rounds last, last years and this years. So this is the... Uh, the excess power during gamma ray measurement. And uh, you see the, uh, for the upper, upper figure, the run for the last year, and the lower one is uh, this year. The, for the INSHA, we have uh, some INSHA program, but excluding these um, part, I mean shaded, shaded area, we have a total energy production of 1.3 megajoule in this period, right? So uh, this is a typical background gamma ray spectrum. Uh, this, took, uh, this, this, this data, this, these data are taken without excess power. You can see lots of peaks in this, in this spectrum. And all peaks can be identified. 
Uh, they are from the thallium, thallium series and the uranium series, and also the uh, potassium-40. And uh, we know that those of nuclei of radon, that's a source of radioactive aerosols. So that is uh, concentration of this uh, uh, background is changes time to time. So therefore, we should be a little bit careful if so something. But anyhow, the uh, plus we see the some cesium-137. So this is the, just a remnant of Fukushima nuclear uh, plant accident. We still have that, but very low counting rate right now. Okay, if we change to the uh, <coughs> four grams gamma spectrum, well, which is the uh, we, we are during the time we are uh, producing X power, but essentially no uh, change. I mean the foie gras spectrum is almost uh, similar as the uh, background spectra. All peaks agree with those in the background spectra. So therefore, we have to search, I mean, we have to calculate how much uh, gamma rays, uh, yeah, we have, to, we have to search for the upper limit of these gamma ray transitions. Okay, by, by, by assuming the, some of the specific reaction is occurring. So first, we are assuming that nickel 58 plus proton, you can see the, on the, in the left side figure, the, it says the energy relation of the nickel 58 plus proton system. The starting from the red line, upper line, there's a lot of uh, capture gamma rays. There should be the capture, capture gamma rays, and they made a, a blue line, cobalt to cobalt 59, and it decays within a one second. Then we could see the nickel 59 gamma rays. We should see these two transitions. But you look at that spectrum on the right side, high, right side we have a just a, a continuous background. So therefore, we said the upper limit should be the uh, three standard deviation of the background. Then we can calculate the, uh, how much count we get. And then also we get the number of the reactions, how much reactions we can get during the, uh, during the measurement. That's only the 10 to the seventh. And we know the total energy production, pro, uh, it's a, it is 1.3 megajoule corresponding to the eight times 10 to the 18 MeV. So divided that, expect number of the reaction is 10 to the 17. But the reality is, uh, I, I can conclude that contribution of this particular process is just a contribution to the excess energy is just that less than 10 to minus 11. So that, that means the nickel plus proton reactions are not a heat source at the present experiment. And then uh, we can just imagine the, uh, we, I want, want to introduce uh, some kind of, uh, uh, say, quasi particles that the proton dressed with the electrons inside the, inside the metal. So I just put a P quotation. So this is a proton dressed with the electrons. So this behaves uh, when the two things are, are cl closed, I mean nickel plus uh, this pro dressed proton closed, then it can cause the uh, virtual, virtual transition, make a virtual neutron, and that neutron is absorbed to the uh, nickel target. Then we have, a, a, let's say, again, the, we, we are just a red, red line of a, energy diagram, which is shown the middle of the, of, of your slide. The finally, we have to see the, these two transitions, at least 3, 3, 339 and 465. But you look at the spectrum, there's no, no such signals. So I can calculate again uh, what, how much uh, this process contributes to the energy production. The conclusion is contribution of this reaction to the X-ray energy is less than to 10 to the minus 9. So that does mean 
Nickel plus, I would say, dressed proton reactions are not a heat source. Then I have to go to the just a P plus P, P reaction occurring uh, with, a, with a nickel base or copper base, whatever it is, I mean, the, in the surrounding uh, circumstances. So just show the Feynman diagram here, the P, P plus P going to the uh, deuterium and the positorium, po po positorium and the neutrino. So the left side, the figure shows that the con need the continuous uh, uh, spectrum of, of positorum because the final state is three body. But anyhow, the, the positorum is decaying, uh, uh, energy of the positorum is reduced to reduce when the, it going inside the material, then finally gets the electron and makes a two gamma rays. That is a 511 gamma rays. And we look at the 511 gamma rays, oh, gee, there's a there. But this is a from the uh, natural background. So therefore, we have to, again, just see the uh, upper limit of this one. And we did the sa same thing as we did before. Then finally, we got this number. OK, contribution of this reaction to the excess energy is just less than 10 to the minus 14. Again, uh, the P plus P going to D plus E plus neutrino rea reaction is not a heat source of this case. And then we look at the continuum gamma rays. Yes, we sometimes of those gamma ray yield exceeded over background yield. Uh, what we showed here is just an average counting rate for the uh, last year's run and uh, this year's run. Well, sometimes uh, fluctuating, and that fluctuation is much bigger than the fluctuation of background statics itself. For example, if you look at the S07 for the last year's run, you, you, you see the jump up. But actually, we found that. This change is consistent with that of the monitor. We have a monitor, a radiation monitor outside because our laboratory has an accelerator, uh, three, accelerator three or four accelerators, so we always monitor that. So the, for the last run, uh, and the monitor shows with a, the brown line, it's suddenly uh, going up, just uh, consistent with the, our observation. And on the right-hand figure shows the, the outside the monitor uh, behavior just uh, as a, our result. So therefore, our conclusion for this continuum gamma rays, uh, we, we conclude that years of continuous gamma rays are less than the statistical fluctuations, again. But anyhow, we can expect some of the uh, continuous electrons from the, uh, let's say, dressed P, dressed P going to E plus D plus neutrino reaction. So this is the dressed pr protons inside the metal. Then uh, we, 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 we get a, uh, oh, let's say, 0.5 MeV uh, average energy from the electrons, not from a neutrino because the neutrino is a not carried out his energy by just kinetic energy. So there, but I can calculate the expected spectrum of an electron and the gamma ray. Uh, in, the, in the slide shows the electron spectrum by blue line. And uh, the, you, you can see the kinetic energy spread out very, very uh, wide range. But the Bremerstrand st strengths uh, strength is concentrated in, on the very low energy region. So that's, we can estimate the upper limit of this uh, process. And let's say, uh, we did the same, same way, but in this case, uh, I just calculated a little bit larger energy range from 100 keV to 600 keV. But anyhow, the con conclusion is this, contribution of this reaction to the excess energy is, again, less than 10 to the minus 9. So therefore, this is not a heat source either. But 
we can continue this way, uh, just, just consideration, multiple the reactions. Uh, we look at the spectral, energy spectrum. OK, so it, it, this is a 3D case, three uh, dressed protons going to the D plus P plus two electrons and a neutrino. Then the electron spectrum is just shown at the upper graph. In this case, if you compare the, the energy spectrum before, then the, you see the electron energy shifted towards the lower energy side. So that means uh, we can something expect some uh, uh, excess, uh, excess uh, yield for the low energy gamma rays. And, uh, and also the proton energy is also shift down and neutron is also. And we can do that for the four dressed protons also and then calculate the spectra. But in this case, the energy of the release, release the energy is much larger than the three body case. Therefore, the expected spectra uh, is, has a high energy component than the uh, three body case. So therefore, if this kind of four body reaction there, then we could see the gamma rays continuum gamma rays for over 100 keV. And for the proton case also, the proton energy is larger. So therefore, we could see the nickel plus P gamma reactions remnant. But we don't see that. So just simple, I, I want to show the just simple measure of a reaction probability. That's because this is just the uh, continuation of, uh, uh, from the high energy side. So penetrability is given this. Uh, equation and uh, just calculate us simply at the two body cross sections like this way, then we can compare the how difficult these reactions are. For, for example, we compare the P plus P and the nickel plus P. So the final uh, process should be the uh, weak interaction process. So therefore for P plus P case, we have a 10 to the minus 119 uh, probability. But for the nickel plus P case, we have a 10 to the minus 3,986 probability. So that is, that is it. But if you compare with a D plus D reaction, so in this case, the, okay, if including the electromagnetic interaction, the D plus D shows us 10 to the minus about minus uh, 150. And in this case, proton case, including weak interaction, 10 to the minus 20. So in the, that shows the PP reaction, uh, the, I mean, that the weak interaction might not be so disadvantageous at ultra low energies. But anyway, uh, we need a high electron density for large screening as well as enhanced weak process. So conclusions. There were no gamma ray transition down to 50 keV during the heat generation of 1.3 megajoule. Only upper limits of gamma ray emissions were obtained. Several reactions were examined, although they are only kinematically possible and no dyna dynamics are considered at all. But anyhow, the nickel plus P or nickel plus dress dressed P reaction did not occur. The, <coughs> the, <coughs> the contribution is 10 to the minus 9 less than 10 to the minus 9. The PP plus uh, D plus E plus neutrino reaction or the dress 2P reaction did not occur. The contribution is 10 to the minus 9. Uh, three body uh, dress P reaction for the body dress proton reactions are also discussed. And finally, I want to stress that measurement for E gamma less than 50 keV are very important to the possible of multiple reactions are with other possibilities. Thank you. Now we have time for one question. According to the William Larson theory, Gamma rays are suppressed. They're shifted uh, into the infrared by uh, 
high mass electrons, like a Compton shift. So I'm not saying that. I'm not saying uh, either. The lack of gamma rays is is it a provable assumption? There is no reaction. That's fine. So the the theoretical people should find a way why the gamma ray transition not occur. Could you define what you mean by the um, protons that are dressed? Oh. Well, yeah. Uh, I imagine that uh, that's not a hydrogen. But anyhow, uh, you know, the, we, are, we were uh, still, yeah, we are measuring the screening energy of a deuterium. So the, we, we thought that the deuterium, deuterium is much, yeah, deuterium surrounding the electron, electron seas. And uh, close to the uh, deuterium, the density of the electron should be larger than that. So therefore, we can, I can imagine that the extension of a, a so-called uh, Thomas Fermi atomic model. So that's a not a real hydrogen, but you see the very exponential uh, distribution of uh, electrons surrounding that. I, I'm imagining such kind of that, but according to our result of screen potential, we need a very much high, high density surrounding that. So you would not be considering the deep orbit electrons? Well, so. not, now, not right now. Thank you. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Last question. Yes. Uh, I, it's uh, maybe more uh, a suggestion than a question, that uh, taking these fluctuations uh, of the background into account, uh, I think it would be valuable to subtract the uh, background and, um, uh, and measurement runs, and then look at what is the difference and see what is the continuum spectrum. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We did that. So you see the, uh, on the red, red line, a red curve is the background. And the uh, blue line is the uh, forward line. We saw the, uh, the some here. Yes, yes. So su uh, subtracting one is this. Yes, so, so there is some uh, radiation signature, to be clear, it's just we don't know how to interpret this radiation signature. No, I would say this is from the other side. So if you want to measure the, something like that, you have to put a, at least two detectors. One is just focusing the, your, your device, and the other detector blocked from them, close to, to your detector. Then you can know there's another another effect from the outside. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you.